The world of man. People belong to the human species which is popularly called man. When we say man in this chapter we are talking about all people of all races, men, women and children. In 1974, the most complete man-like skeleton was found in Ethiopia, nicknamed Lucy. She was estimated to be about 40 years old and 106 centimeter tall when she died 3 million years ago. This illustration shows the skulls and facial characteristics of Rhodesian man, Homo erectus and Neanderthal man. The Englishman, Italian and Indian above are all Caucasians. This racial group is widespread in Europe, the Middle East, North Africa and India, and they have skin colors ranging from fair to dark. This Kalahari Bushman from the deserts of southern Africa is a member of the Kapiod group, the Ghanaian Ashanti and Ugandan Bahima are African members of the Negroid group. Although they have different facial characteristics and features, the Embut goat man from Molecula Island, the Fijian and the Australian Aborigine are all Australoid peoples with dark skins. With their yellowish skin, dark brown eyes and straight black hair, the Eskimo, Burmese man and Chinese are all Mongoloids. The human body is made up of many millions of tiny units called cells, each of which works by itself and with other cells to carry on the process of life. 1. Sternohyoid 2. Trapezius 3. Pectoralis minor 4. Triceps 5. Biceps 6. Rectus abdominis 7. Brachioradialis 8. Pronator tears 9. Flexor carpi ulnaris 10. Flexor digitorum superficialis 11. Flexor carpi radialis 12. Flexor pollicis brevis, 13, iliacus, 14, adductor longus, 15, gracilis, 16, vastus medialis, 17, vastus lateralis, 18, gastrocnemius, 19, soleus, 20, flexor digitorum longus, 21, occipitofrontalis frontal, 22, occipitofrontalis rear, 23, orbicularis oculi, 24, levator lobby superioris alacnosi, 25, levator anguli oris, 26, rhizorius, 27, depressor lobby inferioris, 28, sternocleidomastoid, 29, deltoid, 30, pectoralis major, 31, triceps, 32, serratus anterior, 33, external oblique, 34, internal oblique, 35, extensor digitorum, 36, bicipital epineurosis, 37, gluteus medius, 38, gluteus maximus, 39, sartorius, 40, rectus femoris, 41, gracilis, 42, semitendinosus, 43, biceps femoris, 44, vastus lateralis, 45, gastrocnemius, 46, tibialis anterior, 47, soleus, 48, peroneus brevis, 49, splenius capitus, 50, levator scapulae, 51, rhombodius major, 52, supraspinatus, 53, infraspinatus, 54, tears minor, 55, tears major, 56, triceps, 57, longicimus thoracus, 58, serratus posterior, 59, brachioradialis, 60, flexor carpa ulnaris, 61, gluteus minimus, 62, piriformis, 63, gemellus, 64, biceps femoris. Muscles account for about 35 to 45 percent of the weight of the human body. They can be flexed or extended, as is shown here by the movement of the arm. There are three types of muscles, skeletal, cardiac and smooth, of which skeletal which cover the skeleton, are the largest and most powerful. Skeleton provides the human body with support and protection of delicate internal organs. The central axial skeleton, or spine, supports the skull, arms and legs. The bones themselves are made of minerals and a special fibrous protein which is called collagen. This representation of the circulatory system shows how blood is pumped by the heart around human body. It is carried away from the heart by the artery and returned via the veins. The blood is oxygenated in the lungs and then carried heart by the veins. It is then pumped fro the heart in the arteries, then passes through a network of capillaries where the oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide and waste. The deoxygenated blood is transported by the veins back into the heart before being reoxygenated in the lungs. When air is breathed into the body, it passes through the trachea into the bronchi and then into the lungs, where an exchange of gases takes place. Carbon dioxide is expelled from the body and the fresh reoxygenated blood is pumped via the heart to the body. Inside the grape-like clusters of the alveoli, stale blood is reoxygenated, 
The alveoli are mini air pockets which are surrounded by the blood vessels. Oxygen is filtered out through their walls into the blood vessels to be carried a wah around the body. At the same time, carbon dioxide waste is expelled from the blood vessels into TG alveoli. Food passes through the body's digestive system and is broken down and absorbed. After being processed, the digested substances are absorbed into the bloodstream, which supplies the cells with nutrients. Enzymes within the body break down the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Whereas vitamins and minerals are used in their natural form, undigested waste matter is eliminated from the body through the anus. The two kidneys and ureters drain urine into the bladder. The function of the urinary system is to produce urine, and thus wastes are filtered from the blood and transported from the body. The nephrons inside the kidneys filter between 170 and 200 liters of fluid in any 24-hour period. Nearly all of this fluid, about 99%, is reabsorbed by the body. Only living things can reproduce themselves. If you break a stone, you get several small pieces but you will never have stones which grow to look like the original. Living things have young which grow to look like their parents. Humans reproduce themselves as babies which grow into adult humans. After the male sperm fertilizes the female egg, the nucleus divides until an embryo begins to form. Its backbone starts to form at the three and a half weeks, and at six weeks old, the tiny embryo has arms, legs, and depressions where the eyes and ears will develop. The fetus is about four centimeter long. At eight to 10 weeks, its brain has developed and its limbs are distinguishable. At 12 weeks, the fetus is beginning to resemble a baby. The fully developed baby in the womb obtains its nourishment from its mother by means of the placenta. Oxygen and food is passed continuously through the placenta to the baby, and waste products are passed out into the mother's bloodstream. The baby is fully formed at 36 weeks, and birth generally occurs 40 weeks after the mother's last menstrual period. Twins, sometimes from develop within the womb web and egg splits into two after fertilization identical twins, or when two separate eggs are fertilized by two different spermatozoa. Fraternal twins, they share the same placenta, but each fetus has its own amniotic sac. These Swedish girls have all inherited their parents' blue eyes and fair hair. Certain physical features are passed on genetically from parents to children. The nucleus of every body cell contains about 100,000 genes and 46 chromosomes. And thus, when an egg is fertilized by a sperm to produce a human fetus, the resultant baby inherits certain genes from both of its parents. This illustration shows the position of the different glands in the human body. There are two types of glands, ducted, exocrine glands, cruise sections of each are shown below. The endocrine glands produce the hormones that control many of the body's functions and growth. Man's brain is encased within his protective bony skull. The brain which weighs from 1250 to 1380 gm is made up of 30 billion cells and continues to grow until the individual is 20 years old. A mass of nerve fibers connect the cells and transmit signals from the body to the brain and from one part of the brain to another, information being transmitted by means of minute electrical impulses. 1. Cerebrum 2. Cerebellum 3. Brainstem 4. Spinal cord 5 peripheral nerves, 6 eye, 7 lacrimal gland, 8 respiratory, 9 submaxillary gland, 10 sublingual gland, 11 parotid gland, 12 heart, 13 lungs, 14 stomach, 15 liver, 16 pancreas, 17 intestines, 18 kidney, 19 bladder, 20 reproductive organs. The electroencephalogram can measure brain wave patterns and these are represented on a screen. The waves on the screen correspond to the different states of being awake and relaxed, awake and concentrating, and ordinary sleep. These diagrams show the different brain structures of a mammal and a bird. Whereas the mammal's brain has a well-developed cerebral cortex, the bird has an instinct brain. Thus the corpus stratium, which coordinates instinctive patterns of behavior, is highly developed. The mammal is a much more intelligent animal than the bird, and this is reflected in its more complex brain structure. 1. Corpus striatum. 2. Cerebral cortex. 3. Optic nerve. 4. Medulla. 5. Cerebellum. When the brain is viewed from above, the two halves, which are joined by the corpus callosum, can be seen clearly. The right half of the brain controls the left side of the body and the left half the right side, but although they are mirror images of each other, they each have different functions. Thus, speech is controlled by one half of the brain and intuitive activities by the other. The visual nerve fibers cross over and although the retina of each eye has a total image of the subject, 
the left half of the brain sees only the right part of the field of vision and the right half only the left part. The nerve cells in the retina send information on color and intensity of light to the brain. Different areas of the brain are responsible for such functions as thought, vision, muscular movement, coordination, logic, smell, taste, and personality. The right hemisphere of the brain is involved in artistic and imaginative activities, whereas the left side is mainly concerned with more logical, analytical pursuits, critical thinking, numbers, language. When someone is left-handed, the right half of the brain is dominant. Left-handedness is found in less than 10% of people. It is common in twins. The instincts of hunger and feeding are common to all animals, including man, but although it is instinctive to this baby to eat, he has to learn how to eat in a socially acceptable way, and mastering the art of using such feeding implements as spoons and forks is a form of learned behavior. Writing is a form of learned behavior, which is taught to children at school. Young children operate on a concrete operational level, which means that they can use rules and concepts in their concrete form but have still to master their abstract use. Having learned to write and read, the children never forget, and the skill is stored in their memory for the rest of their lives. An EEG machine can see the watt in which we sleep, and a pen traces the information onto a moving paper belt. The regular alpha rhythm waves, a waves with a frequency of 10 cycles per second change as a person falls asleep to irregular waves, and later, short waves interrupted by bursts of faster waves, which are called spindles. These cut waves of the ear, nose, mouth, and eye show their internal structure. We use the five senses sight, smell, touch, hearing, and taste to interpret the world around us, and receptors in these organs send nerve impulses back to the brain for interpretation. The eye has a slight bulge at the front and a stalk containing the optic nerve behind. Light enters the eye through the transparent cornea and is focused by the lens onto the retina which contains millions of light-sensitive cells called rod and cones. The pupil in the center of the colored iris controls the amount of light entering the eye and can enlarge or dilate according to the intensity of the light. Thus in dim light, the pupil expands, whereas in bright light it gets smaller, so that less light enters the eye. Taste and smell are separate chemical senses, which are closely linked. Thus a person complains that he is unable to taste food when suffering from a head cold. There are about 10,000 taste buds in the surface of the tongue, and when we eat, the food chemicals react with the sensory hairs. The sensitive scent cells in the nose detect any odors in the air. Wine tasters have a highly developed, acute sense of both smell and taste, and thus can identify hundreds of wines. We recognize the sensations of touch, pain, cold, pressure and heat by means of the millions of minute nerve fibers in our skin, which send back messages to the brain. This cross-section through the skin shows the various nerve fibers. These sensory perceptors are sensitive to different things. For example, the Ruffini corpuscles react to heat, whereas the Krauss and bulbs, most prevalent in the tongue and the eye, can sense cold. The blind woman is reading Braille, a system of reading based on a special pattern of raised dots. She uses both hands to read it, and the extra-sensitive nerve fibers in her fingers quickly touch the dots and transmit the information to her brain for decoding. Rays of light enter the eye and pass through the cornea before being bent by the lungs and focused on the retina. An image of the observed pencil is thus formed on the retina. The cones in the retina distinguish its color, and information is carried to the brain by the optic nerve. The brain perceives distance and depth. There is great scientific interest and research into the potential of the human mind and how it perceives the outside world. Perception and illusions are important fields of study. In the optical illusion, a reversal effect may occur. The top picture may be perceived a vase, but on closer investigation it looks like two faces in profile. Although the dots are equally spaced, they appear as vertical columns because of their color arrangement. The art of writing developed from an early simple picture form of recording information and knowledge. By the use of pictures and complex hieroglyphs, early man was able to record his thoughts and communicate with other men. These stylish hieroglyphs are Mesoamerican. Gradually, simpler strokes and symbols, which were quicker and easier to write down, replaced the more pictorial hieroglyphs and modern writing appeared. Man's scientific understanding has greatly increased in the last two centuries, which have witnessed a revolution in technology. Scientists have discovered how to make special synthetic fibers like plastic. In this injection molding process, a polypropylene chair seat is being ejected from a mold. Plastics are now used for many household, industrial and building applications.
Conservation of the environment is becoming increasingly a matter of concern as industrial pollution takes its toll on out natural resources and the erg's wildlife. Scientists observe and record the effects of industrialization and pollution on plant and animal life on the seashore, the countryside and inland lake and rivers, which may well become polluted by oil, detergents and industrial waste. Oh,